Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Bridges. Good morning, everybody. Uh, unfortunately, I have to start with a confession uh, today. Uh, till last night, I mistakenly thought I was going to be delivering this address to the graduates of the School of Business. Uh, entirely my fault, and uh, not, not going to be a problem. I've, I've given this speech a good rewrite, and it should be just fine. Most of what I was going to say is applicable across all graduations, across all um, disciplines, and um, so we'll give it a go. So forgive me if there's anything that slipped through that's no longer applicable there. Kia ora tato. Congratulations on being graduates. Congratulations to all of you who've already got jobs and are already earning good money in the workforce. Sorry, actually, I thought they'd taken that bit out. <laughs> that was uh, for the business graduates there. Uh, my name is uh, John Bridges. Always get them on site at the beginning. Um, like, you, uh, like many of you, I'm in the arts, um, though I am in comedy and television, which are arts but are not considered proper arts. Uh, TV and comedy are like the unwelcome guests at the arts party who brought the lion red and uh, tried to hit on dance all night, uh, but she was only interested in mime. Uh, but it turned out okay because uh, comedy took the piss out of mime all night and then TV beat him up at the car park and he's never been seen since. Uh, so, a uh, good result, probably for the best. Uh, graduates and graduands, I stand in front of you today bearing great news. The worst part of your life is over. <laughs> That's my great news, the worst part of your life is over. I'm not talking about virginity or the flag referendum, <laughs> though uh, both of those were interminable and agonizing and ended very badly. Of course, I'm talking about exams. Exams are over. In two weeks, I turn 50, and in uh, all of my 49.96 years, I've had some pretty bad things happen. But nothing as agonizing, as painful, as protracted, and as deliberately inflicted as exams. In a poll of 1,000 people who were asked, what is three hours long but should be much shorter? Most people said, the Lord of the Rings movies, obviously, <laughs> of course. But second on the list was obviously the Hobbit movies. <laughs> but right up there was exams. So it doesn't matter what happens to you from here on in, I can tell you in good faith, the worst bit is over. over. A couple of things obviously might be worse. Death could be worse. We're still the 50 years ahead of all of you of product cycles, fiscal viability, and saying the phrase, going forward. Oh, sorry, no, uh, again, that was for the business students, so uh, don't worry about that. But we can't rule out other conceivably worse things happening to you. You could end up leading the Labour Party. You could end up designing a flag that was convincingly outvoted in a referendum, both of which have happened to Massey graduates. But for most of you, the worst is over. And yes, Kyle Lockwood was a Massey graduate, but not from the design school. Not from the design school. And because exams are over, you might think that assignments were over too. But don't be too sure, because one day, way down the track, maybe 20, 25 years later, somebody from your old university might email you. They might give you an assignment just like that, 2,000 words, due May the 26th, a speech on the topic of advice for graduates. <laughs> Bam. Just like that, you're right back at Massey University. Good times. So congratulations, graduates, on being in this room, on wearing these capes and these hats. You look like the Hogwarts 10 years reunion. <laughs> Harry, what have you graduated in? Proctology, huh. expellianus. <laughs> but you look great, we all look great. It's very few people in the world have worked so hard for so many years to look this great wearing these weird clothes. Just you, <laughs> me, these guys, and Lady Gaga, I think. I'm honored to be allowed to speak to you today, and I'm proud to be an alumnus of this university, and I'm very lucky to have been given a master's degree, which they can never take away from me, <laughs> uh, which, which has been proven in the courts. So uh, don't worry about that. 
In my day, uh, the way we did the bachelor's degree was literally old school. I believe you do things quite a bit differently these days, don't you? I think um, at the start of your degree, there were 23 of you, and then every week you did some embarrassing, awful tasks, and gradually every week one of you was kicked off until at the end only one of you gets the bachelor. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah. Go on. And then tomorrow or the next day, it'll get taken off you again, I think. <laughs> Team Naz. Uh, I've been asked to give you some inspirational words of advice this morning. In the future, you lot are going to contribute so much to New Zealand. I mean, I'm sure of that. After all, they just keep making beans and they're not going to count themselves, are they? Sorry, sorry again. That was uh, <laughs> for the business students. So, yes, your contribution is going to be great. But it's not to me, it's to New Zealand. So I thought I'd let New Zealand pay you in advance for the contribution you're going to give. So what follows is five pieces of advice for you gleaned from the wisest towns in New Zealand. The five wisest town slogans of New Zealand and a couple from the South Island too. <laughs> Wise town number one, Dannyburg, of course. The town slogan of Dannyburg is, take a liking to a Viking. <laughs> it is. Why? Well, because Vikings have got a lot to teach us, don't they? They only care about what matters. The sum total of their artistic contribution to the world was the word Thursday and the name Norman. So uh, in a lot of ways, you're the Vikings of Massey University. No, that again was for the business school. Don't worry about that. But nevertheless, Danny Virk's advice stands. Take a liking to a Viking. If you see a Viking, swipe right, my young friends. Swipe right. <laughs> swipe right. My advice to you via wise town number two, Timaru. Timaru's slogan. Timaru in the house, anyone? Great. Timaru's slogan until a short while ago was touch, taste, feel. It's not a joke, that is their serious slogan. And what better way, what better advice, what better way for you to treat the world? As you go as graduates, use all your experiences to touch and taste and feel all the world has to offer you. It's not all the senses though, is it? For some reason, Timaru to chose to leave out hearing and smelling. <laughs> Maybe in Timaru things don't sound or smell so good. And I suppose Timaru Smells awful, sounds bad, is not a great slogan. <laughs> so please, everybody, touch, taste, and feel. Obviously, do go carefully. It's good advice at a wild food festival. Not such good advice when you're meeting your future mother-in-law. <laughs> Some mother-in-laws in the house, that's nice. <laughs> Wise town number three is Nelson, whose slogan, and therefore my advice to you today, is live the day. Live the day. Just one day. <laughs> Listen carefully and Nelson is telling us life is brutally short. You will be dead much short, sooner than you think. Possibly within 24 hours. <laughs> Consider your mortality and act accordingly. But how should we act? If only there were people in the world who could tell us how we'll feel at the end of our short day. Which of our actions we'll be proud of and which we'll regret? Well, luckily such people do exist and they're called old people. <laughs> and if you ask them, they will tell you again and again. <laughs> the number one regret of the elderly, as studies show, is that they worked too hard and didn't spend enough time with their families. Now, who knows what your, might, your lives might hold. As arts graduates, this might not apply to you. <laughs> it's not so relevant to me because I'm, I don't really, you know, like my family. Uh, so <laughs> I'm in a great position where this shouldn't be a problem for me in later life. The best way to keep Nelson's advice in mind and really live that day, I think, is to think of an 80-year-old you. Think of the 80-year-old you keeping a constant watch on you. Try and please that old codger. Imagine him or her watching you like some sort of geriatric stalker or some sort of deathbed peeping Tom with his foggy eyes peering at you, fixed on you all day, even as you shower. <laughs> but don't go overboard listening to old people. Don't forget, 
quite a few of these old people can't remember where their sandwiches are. <laughs> and some of them have forgotten how pants work. <laughs> so it all has to be taken with a grain of salt. Also remember that it's important not only to think about what you regret in 80 years time, but also to keep an eye and to remember what you might regret immediately. Keep a balance, don't fly Jetstar. <laughs> don't eat KFC. Don't bet money on the Warriors. Don't eat, don't eat that, it's been on the floor. Are all mistakes that I've made in the past 24 hours. <laughs> so live the day, thank you Nelson. Number four. Dunedin. For a long time, the slogan of Dunedin was, it's all right here. The trouble with that slogan, of course, is that it can either mean it's all right here, or it's all right here. <laughs> it's the world's only example of different emphasis, giving a phrase completely the opposite meaning you were hoping for. The other example, of course, is when instead of saying, your bum doesn't look big in that, you say, your bum doesn't look big in that. An often fatal error. The lesson you can take from Dunedin is that one thing means opposites. So my advice and what Dunedin is telling us is that in this world where meaning is unavailable, where confusion reigns and opposites are simultaneously true, you must be vigilant for the truth. You must choose carefully what you believe. You must make sure you have a good reason to believe something and don't, don't hold any belief too strenuously. Trust the people who most happily allow uncertainty, like the scientists. Above all, mistrust the people who seem most certain. For example, if anybody says to you, everything happens for a reason, then punch them in the mouth. <laughs> if they say, why did you do that? Say, for a reason. <laughs> so thank you, Dunedin. Number five, our final wise town is the Hutt Valley. <laughs> Who said? Whose slogan? A few years ago they came out with a slogan, right up my hut valley. <laughs> it's true. That's true. And I think what that's teaching us today is that you should ride a bike. You might unkindly say, well that's a bit of a stretch. And I really wanted to tell you today to ride a bike and I couldn't find a town slogan that said so explicitly. So, uh, and I'm fairly sure when the Hutt Valley Council came up with the slogan, right up my valley, they couldn't have meant right up my Hutt Valley. So they probably meant ride a bike. And what better advice could there be? Riding a bike is the only childish joy which is still just as joyful as an adult. Riding a bike will get you there quicker, it will get you there healthier and fitter, it will get you there cheaper, it will get you there faster, and you will arrive with a smile on your face. A bike is the world's most efficient means of transport and one of the most beautiful pieces of design that a human being has ever created. So ride a bike. It won't be easy at times, you will be ridiculed. These days people will say that the only people who should ride bike bikes are seven-year-olds and Olympic athletes. If you're not a child, and you're not Sarah Ulmer, then what are you doing on that thing? I walked into an office the other day, took off my helmet, and the receptionist gave me a parcel to deliver. <laughs> Thought I was a courier. It was a laptop. So the downside of riding a bike is that you'll get no respect from people. The upside is free laptops. <laughs> so ride a bike, and if you want to, you can ride it right up my Hutt Valley. <laughs> so there they are, my five morsels of wisdom from New Zealand to you in advance payment for all you're going to do for this great country. So here's my summary. Whatever happens to you in life, when you're miserable and you're buying a house in Auckland. <laughs> sorry, sorry, that should be when you're happy and you're renting in Petoni. <laughs> Art students. Or when you, when you crash your Porsche Cayenne. Again, sorry, uh, when you crash your MacBook Pro. <laughs> or when you're celebrating your first stock market float. No, that's wrong again, sorry. Uh, when you're using what you've learnt here at Massey to bring something truly beautiful and enriching into this world, and you will. Then I hope these pieces of advice from New Zealand will help you. Thank you very much. Ride a bike.
Thank you, John Bridges, for that most humorous address. You were certainly very talented, and we're glad you graduated from Massey University. So am I. Yeah. <laughs>